Howdy everybody, I'm uh, back again with a uh, little guide on how to use the uh, FLIR po designator pod and uh, just basic weapon operation um, for the Hatchet H60 uh, Blackhawk mod. Um, this helicopter specifically that we're in right now, um, it is the uh, MH60M DAP or uh, Defensive Air Penetrator. Uh, specifically the uh, MLAS or the uh, medium, uh, I believe, let me, I remember what that stands for. <laughs> I believe it is the medium armament support structure. God, that's, that's a mouthful. Um, basically the up arm, like the uh, heavier arm variant of the uh, the DAP. So this is the uh, helicopter that the uh, 160th soar, the Night Stalkers, the helicopter that they use um, for uh, attack operations, um, heavier attack operations, I should say, um, where it calls for a Blackhawk. Um, nice thing about the, this aircraft um, is obviously it's pretty heavily armed, um, but also um, that it's got uh, ISR or intelligence surveillance and recon um, capabilities with the uh, FLIR pod as well as a uh, troop transport in the back. So if you notice here um, it's empty uh, you can have guys just sitting in the back there transport a full-size squad in um, so you can kind of do a dual role with uh, a uh, cast loiter and um, basic troop transport um, you know armed medevac capabilities that type of thing so pretty useful helicopter. Um, let me dive in real quick before I kind of get with started with the uh, you know weapon and FLIR pod and all the little fancy stuff with the MFDs on the inside. Um, we'll go over some keybinds real quick. Uh, so first thing, hit escape, go to configure, controls, um, go to configure add-ons. Then you'll want to go down, um, scroll down here to the UH-60M Blackhawk. Um, a couple things of note, you want to leave most of these set as default. Um, a couple things to note though, the uh, FLIR SLU AIM. Uh, this probably won't be set by default. Um, I would recommend setting this to left windows. Um, if we use, if you use ACE, which you should, um, I do recommend rebind, left windows is your default ACE interact keybind. I do recommend rebinding ACE. Um, me personally, I use for the ACE interact, I use control space. And then for ACE self interact, I use the alt space. Um, reason why is just to avoid overlap with stuff like this. Um, also control space, sometimes I find that uh, the Windows key can, depending on your keyboard setup and your gaming setup, might bring up the Windows icon. Um, for me, it's fine. Um, so you can rebind this to whatever you'd like, obviously. Um, I just recommend something like this. Uh, one thing to note, um, left windows by default will adjust the language that you are speaking with the uh, Acre 2 mod, that radio mod. So if I go out here real quick, if I hit window, left windows, you can see in the bottom right, it's cycling between the common tongue and the blue four tongue. Basically, Acre, it simulates um, the different languages. So just something to keep in the back of your head. <laughs> um, if for some reason someone can't understand you or they're coming across as garbled, that might be why. Um, as a pilot or a cast pilot, you again, you're not going to be interacting with you know um, HVTs or captured individuals. Um, you're likely not gathering intel in person on the ground. Um, just by definition, you're flying, um, so it's not too big of a concern. Um, especially since it's if you're on blue four, it's going to any no matter what, someone no one they'll be able to hear you because common tongue anybody can hear no matter what faction you're on. And then blue four obviously is blue four specific, so not a big deal. Uh, just something to keep in the back of your head. Um, Anyways, so let's uh, jump back into the keybinds here. And we're going to controls, go to configure add-ons. So, slew aim, um, want that bound to something. Uh, slew to HMD, this may be bound by, bound by default, man, words are hard. Um, if it is, I would recommend unbinding this. Um, this, in my experience, this doesn't seem to be working properly. If the current we are we're currently on the stable version of the uh, Hatchet 860, this may be fixed in the dev version. I don't know, um, or it could just be I'm an idiot and um, I don't know how to utilize this properly or it's some weird bug. Either way, um, if you can get it working, props to you. Um, if not, that's fine. I recommend just unbiting the key that whatever that is. It might be Shift T. Can't remember exactly. It's been a little bit, so. That's all you should need for uh, the keybinds for the uh, H60. 
Um, we will go, just hit okay, go back. Um, I do have the in-game audio turned down. Um, the helicopter obviously is a lot louder <laughs> when you're in-game, so just hopefully that way you guys can hear me a little bit better. Um, but moving on. Um, so the next thing to discuss, just the uh, the loadout, the actual loadouts of what weapons you're carrying. Um, you're gonna be, by default, the MLAS variant, so this is the quad pylon variant, two on each side. Um, it's gonna run Every DAP is going to have a two forward facing fixed um, M134 7.62 miniguns. Very useful, pretty similar to uh, the AH6, uh, the Little Bird in that default kit variant. Um, although the Little Bird can run GAO, um, not the GAO 8, um, not, the, <laughs> not the A10 gun, uh, the 50 caliber um, GAO. I forgot what the designation is, but basically it's the 50 cal DAO instead of the 7.62. Um, that's not what is on this. Uh, you can also, on the outer pylons, by default, you're going to be running uh, dual Hellfire 2s, um, specifically the AGM 114K variant. K is in kilo. Um, that would be my recommendation as well. Uh, the K is the high, the, well, basically the heavy AT anti tank warhead, um, primarily for killing vehicles. Most of the time, from a cast perspective, that is what you'll be tasked to deal, deal with as your primary threat in this aircraft. Um, there is an option for the 114N, and as in Nancy, um, that is the high explosive thermobaric warhead, which is primarily used for anti personnel and anti structure operations. It's a little bit more niche, um, but definitely has a place. But by default, I would recommend just running with the K's. Um, that's going to be a more general purpose um, missile for you. Next up, the inner left side pylon there. That is the uh, M230 uh, chain gun. It's kind of hard to see there's a better look at it from there um, that is a 30 millimeter high explosive dual purpose uh, auto cannon um, it is actually the exact same uh, gun that is on the gun turret of the ah64d apache uh, shoots 200 300 rounds per minute something like that um, pretty heavy hitter really good for uh, anti-infantry operation and just anti you know anti-vehicle in terms of uh you know, soft skin vehicles or even slightly, lightly up armored vehicles. It's pretty good with the HEDP rounds. Um, I think you, I forget how much rounds of ammunition you have. I think it's like 1200 or something like that. So, um, very useful. Uh, would not want to be at the other end of that. And then the last on the inner right side pylon, you've got the, uh, in this case, the default kit is the, uh, 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 Hydra 70 rockets, but in the, the dagger, uh, guided kit. So basically, what a dagger or a uh, direct attack guided rocket, that's what dagger stands for. Um, it's very similar to the APKWS or Advanced Precision Kill Weapon System. Um, they're almost <laughs> ubiquitous. The difference is dagger was designed for Hellfire mounts and it basically hot plug directly into Hellfire 2 launchers, which is really mean. The Hellfire was originally developed for helicopters. So that's really the APKWS dagger very, very similar in that they're essentially, it's very similar to the JDAM where it is, takes an existing munition, in this case, an unguided uh, 70 millimeter hydro rocket, um, and is a little kit that you put on that allows that rocket to become a laser guided weapon um, and steerable, etc. So very useful. Um, the dagger missiles, in, at least in this case, are incredibly useful for um, kind of medium and below armored vehicle targets, um, stuff like you know, BTR 80s, um, side on profile kills, especially side on kills against the kind of like a, a BMD or a BMP. Those are the tracked IFVs. Um, really useful because it allows you to kind of save those precious hellfires, the heavier hitting boys, for your heavy targets like, you know, your MBTs, your up armored stuff, um, you know, BMD 4, stuff like that. So, I um, believe that is it for the, uh, the weapon loadout. So, Moving on, um, one thing to note before we, again, before we dive in, I'm kind of teasing you guys, uh, is the, oops, let me get into first person view here. Um, so first of all, I'm assu this assuming you know how to already start up the aircraft and uh, get and basically deploy the FLIR pod. Um, so well, FLIR pod is already deployed here in this case. Um, let's go and move that to uh, zoom in here. We got a little target. Got a couple targets out there moving, I believe. Aha. Uh -huh. Kind of hard to see, but go ahead. Oh, 
for it to get a lock. There we go. Oh, come on. Might help if uh turn the laser on. It's, uh, but I'm hitting Control T, by the way, so. Just trying to get the lock on this target. There we go. Okay, so now it's tracking. <laughs> um, okay, let's go back to uh, first person mode. So I'm going to reference this as cockpit view or first person view. This kind of this view right here where you can see the MFDs or the multifunction displays. Um, third person view obviously is being able to see outside the aircraft. So if I reference that just so you're aware. Um, one thing to note here with the uh, MFDs and the uh, FLIR pod, um, the PIP or picture in picture draw distance is going to affect how much you can see here in the first person cockpit view. So if I, uh, well, let's go in there and uh, zoom in. Actually, let's pick a closer target. Something that's, oh, it's doing that snap bug again. Um, let's move this around. And there we go. Okay. It's, uh, it will lock uh, structures as well, too, which can be kind of nice, if depending on where you aim. So, okay, let's do that. Get out of there. There we go. Okay. A little bit closer, you can see the uh, showing up a bit better on the uh, screen. So, where I was going with the picture-in-picture uh, -picture PIP, um, you'll want to adjust that setting, because oftentimes you might not, it might just be gray. The whole screen may be grayed out. That's because your PIP draw distance is really low. So kind of hard to see here but if I'm looking at this part of the screen if I set if I'm moving this you see that little white fog that's coming in and out that is basically directly related to your PIP draw distance which you can see is what I'm adjusting right here um, for operating this aircraft I do setting to max I, I recommend setting it to max which is around basically 5,000 clicks um, should be fine um, I do wish it went a little bit higher the PIP quality here in the bottom left that is not the draw distance um, despite there being numbers here, um, for some reason, like when we set this, it's still, if you notice here, you go back, it still sets that. I'm not sure if that's a bug on my side or not, but from what I can tell, it doesn't seem to affect anything. Um, the quality, again, you can set that. I leave it very high. You probably could set it to ultra, be fine. Most modern set, like most modern rigs and graphics cards are already overkill for Arma. Like there's basically a kind of a cap I'm kind of hitting around 30 to 50 FPS, depending on what I'm doing. Um, this is a, kind of a multiplayer mission scenario as well. So single player is higher, but again, you're going to almost certainly be doing this in multiplayer, I'm assuming. So your PIP draw distance affects basically how much how much detail and what how far out you can see and how that shows up here in your first person cockpit view. That also applies to other MFDs in other vehicles as well, by the way. So pro tip. Um, Next thing, uh, let's go into the operation modes of the FLIR pod. So again, again, the FLIR screen, make sure, well, this is what it looks like. You want to go into the TAC view and then you'll be, there'll be an option to hit FLIR. By default, it'll likely show up as the EI cast view. This is what you'll see on default startup. Um, you'll hit TAC and then go to FLIR. And if it's not deployed, there'll be a button up here in the top to deploy it. So, um, okay. So let's start with the left side of the screen, since that's going to be really more useful and what you'll probably interact with most of the time. So what I mean by that are these interactables, like up here with the weapon menu. Um, really, that's basically it. But the weapon menu, just hit F. That brings up the ability to see which weapons you have selected. Now, if you have the uh, HUD on or the heads up display, sorry the in this case the hmd helmet mounted display turned on so we'll just turn that on this is the metric view um you'll see it shows now basically i'm looking at my i have my airspeed on the top or the top left there my uh, altitude on the right side the 218 msl um i have auto hover turned on um and the q1 q2 or your engine torque values and laser marker is this is that indicates what weapon or weapon slot you have selected um, so if you have this up, it's not, you don't necessarily need this on. I still strongly recommend having it in this view, um, especially if you're kind of hopping in and out of the MFD. Yes, this will, the HMD will also show you too, um, but there might be times where you want to declutter this. For example, you want to turn this off so you can really, you know, let's say you're not in a uh, 
air combat scenario, you're not in a high threat environment um, providing cast. Maybe you're in more of a recon role. Um, you're at kind of a long range standoff distance. Um, and you know you want to be able to hop in and out and provide accurate recon. So you might want to turn your HMD off to allow you to kind of see things a bit better. So just a, and again, I just still recommend having it on this view because if you hit F, which F is the default key to cycle between weapon slots, um, you're seeing the little red triangle there. It's moving back, moving around, showing me what I have selected. So um, that'll be very important here in just a sec. So that's that screen. And again, the uh, that's this top left button here, you can declutter to basically get rid of it. Uh, moving over to the right side, um, the laser will stop at the top here. Start at the top, man, words. <laughs> um, it is the basically the laser menu. So hit that. Um, and now I've got a couple more options here. So I'll start on the left side. This is the laser designator channel or basically what laser code or um, Yep, for the laser channel that you are, that you, the helicopter in this case, are emitting. Um, that is important to make the distinction between emitting and receiving. You'll see why in a sec. So, they thankfully, um, this this works basically with ACE. So ACE allows you to set the laser code values of your laser designator. So um, if you have, for the examples where you might use this, um, you have multiple aircraft, multiple close air support aircraft, um, and you have multiple JTAC operators or, you know, ground forward air controller operators that are, you know, directing casts, um, you know, and you want to make sure, let's say you assign a channel for each of them. So that way your lasers aren't, you're not locking onto the wrong laser for the aircraft, right? Let's say, you know, you have two squads and both of them have JTAC and they're both pointing at different targets. Well, you want to make sure that whatever the one guy's pointing at and when he's whatever aircraft he's talking to is shooting and going to hit the right one. If they're both using the same laser code, um, it means that the missiles will get confused. Um, worst, you know, best case example, the missile hits one of the targets that they're aiming at. Worst case example, it kind of deviates and veers off and you have a possible blue on blue. So, um, yeah, very, very useful to do. Um, for our operations, we usually only have one JTAC operator. Um, so by default, 99% of the time, you're not going to touch this. You leave it at A, which is the default uh, 1111. Um, but like I said, you'll, there'll be times where you may need to do that. So, um, and just again, you hit F, change it. See, now it's B, C, et cetera. Um, we'll switch it back to A. There we go. Um, on the right side here, you've got the laser um, receiver, for lack of a better word. So you have a mission where you yourself are sending the laser and then tracking or spotting, um, which is this system. So again, if the system, it has a auto mode where, I'll just demonstrate. So let's, uh, oh, I need to turn off ground stabilization. As you can see there, it's got GND stab. That's what ground stabilization is or Geolock, um, Control T, which is the vanilla key bind to that you use in other UAVs and the darter, for example, um, to kind of lock the camera. Same thing here. Um, that's what that's what unlocks and unlocks allows the camera to be slewed and moved around. Um, if I go in, you can see. Uh, actually, this isn't a good example. Um, let me see here. If I uh, okay, so I'll, I'll let me pitch the aircraft up and down. You see how the camera is now moving? It's moving with the helicopter, right? I'm cyclic up and down here, it's moving with it. If I go left, right, or yaw left, right, same thing. It's locked in with the with the vehicle body. Uh, control T. Now it locks it to a target. I am cyclic up down, as you can see there on my horizon indicator on the far left, and then yaw left, right, etc. So locks it the camera stabilization is actually really good in this mod it's probably my favorite it's really really solid it's better than vanilla in my opinion um i would it'd be it'd be nice if everything else has changed but anyway i digress so where was i oh yes i need to first disable the geo lock and then turn on laser spot tracker here if it will let me um not sure why Oh, it's because I'm emitting. That might help. Yep, you're, you're seeing uh, conf confusion happen in real time. Um, okay, like, and this is, this is where the weapon menu is really important because uh, without this, if I, I'll oh, actually let me demonstrate. So without this, um, right now, I don't know what 
um, weapon slot I'm in. Um, and if, like, for example, you don't get that information if you're kind of like in full screen mode here with the camera. So if I left click, you probably heard that. Um, I'm firing mini guns right now. <laughs> and it's not turning the laser rangefinder on and off. So there's no way to see that in this view. Um, so you'll need to go into the cockpit view. This is that is by design to kind of increase immersion. So you want to go here, make sure that weapon menu is turned on. And now you can see, okay, well, I was in guns. So to turn the laser off, go here. Can do that. Now I can toggle that on and off. So let's just lock that. This example. Okay. Go back to the laser menu and we'll do the laser spot tracker. See, now because I'm not emitting, obviously, if you're emitting a laser, obviously it can't scan to <laughs> search for one. Um, so we'll just do auto. You guys see that right now? It's basically doing a four bar um, left, right, up, down, kind of a search pattern, basically. I think the FOV of this is about 20 degrees um, from where the origin point of where the camera was first looking at. Um, it kind of laser spot tracker, it's kind of self-explanatory. If there is a um, ground operator, UAV, another aircraft emitting a laser, this in theory will search and acquire that target automatically, and it will be looking for the emission on the, in this case, channel A, the laser spot tracker here, channel A is 1111, which is the default. So that's where you would change this. Let's say you have a second aircraft emitting on the channel Bravo. Um, well, up change it there. And then it would search for that. So we don't really use this. Um, my recommendation actually for this, um, for kind of quickly switching to where emission targets are. It will kind of coincide with another mod that we use. Um, there's another video that I have out for the uh, simple grid de simple grid designators. God, <laughs> I can't speak today. Um, that allow guys with la the, the kind of the handheld laser designator, um, vehicle laser designators, the darter drone, basically anything with a laser designator uh, capability, that mod allows you to um, mark targets and get 10 digit grid refs um, and do it very quickly um, and in a way that makes sense um, for example let me let me demonstrate real fast let me first turn this off so let me, uh, let me turn for off free look we'll go into a darter drone for example so if I take UAV turret control You'll notice there in bottom right, again, I'm not going to go into detail in this video, but bottom right, that is where it says marker, waypoint, color black, and then the target observer stuff. That is part of that uh, simple grid designator mod. So we'll first want to emit, and I guess this example here, let's just go with this building. Um, we'll do... So update the waypoint here. So let's say destroy, I want to change the color to red. Let's do shift T. Oh, it's because I'm I'm in uh, Zeus mode. Whoops, I forgot about that. Um, let's do. You know what? Let's just use the uh, aircraft. Yeah, ignore the stuff that popped up at the top. That's because I went into Zeus mode. So apologize for that. Okay. Clear. Turn on our laser, and then we'll just mark this target here. So I've made that noise. Um, again, I'll go into detail on all this, but basically this is what I would recommend kind of instead of using the auto spot, um, basically shift click. Um, most everybody's familiar with that already. And it's not saying you can't use that auto spot tracker. It's just for our purposes, it might, it's more efficient. Um, so you, let's say, let's say the ground operator just made that mark. This is what that's what that system does, by the way. So I've got a timestamp. I've got a, in this case, 10 digit grid ref. So your normal six digits, 155174, for example. This is now 155591744. So it gives you more accurate grid ref, um, as well as the uh, altitude. Um, with multiple JTAC operators, you can, you'll can you be able to very quickly mark. So imagine that you're on the ground and you have a laser and you're, you mark that, like, hey, hit this target. You know, they're on the radio talking, whatever, you're setting up your nine lines, your approach vector, all that stuff, and boom, you've got your target. Be like, okay, hey, hit that target I just marked, you know, timestamp 018. 
Um, okay, so then if I'm, you know, as a pilot here in this example, um, I'm just gonna go boom, you know, oh, I, let's say I shift click it over here. This is the AO I was looking at. And then, oh, okay, here's a specific target, boom, shift click. And, you know, immediate, right? Like next to immediate, less than 10 seconds. So it's also just most people know how to shift click from a training perspective. It's a lot easier to teach that way. Um, and it's pretty accurate as well. So um, that's where that system comes in. I uh, just, I guess a small sidetrack there. So that's why we were, for us in the 91st, we probably won't use the laser spot tracker mode. So that is it on the uh, laser menu here. So that covers both weapons and the laser menu. Again, I'll switch that back over. Um, by the way, you actually can go into the weeds with this weapon control and set actually who has control of which weapons. Very useful if you're running with a co-pilot. Um, pretty self-explanatory. So the left inboard, so this is obviously the left, you have four pylons on this aircraft, left inboard, left outboard, right inboard, right outboard. You basically say, okay, hey, co-pilot, you're controlling all of the hellfires because I want you on the uh, FLIR. You're searching around, I'm gonna focus on flying. So um, you can do that right here. So pretty useful. Um, from a solo perspective, obviously you want everything in pilot control. So uh, for this example, that's what we have. Um, but anyway, back to here. Um, one thing to note, uh, whoops, sorry. Um, why it's even been like that. Uh, in this weapon view here, I believe, where is it? I have to cycle that. There we go, okay. So if I, now that I've cycled to the Hellfires, which are these outer pylons, um, I've got different channels. So same thing, you can set different uh, channels of what you want the Hellfire to lock onto. Um, most of the time you're gonna leave it, like I would just kind of, if you're going to set up multiple channel operation, I would just kind of I would usually assign channels by aircraft and uh, JTAC operators. So like JTAC A, aircraft A, that's channel A, you know, aircraft B, JTAC B, channel B, right? Self-explanatory. Um, that's what I recommend. But there might be times you're, you know, maybe one aircraft got shot down, you got only one cast aircraft, and then you switch back and forth. So that's where you do this. Um, the main thing to focus on here is this a launch trajectory. There's two ways you can actually set this. So um, for those who are familiar with uh, the Hellfires, you can uh, set different launch modes. There is the direct mode, which is what is by default. The high mode, um, which that basically will shoot the Hellfire up immediately. It'll go on a high ascent profile and then do a top attack mode, basically. Um, it, takes a lot, it is a much longer flight path. It takes a lot longer for that missile to actually impact the target, but um, has a higher probability chance of hitting the target, assuming it's not moving fast, and also is a top attack, so is a much higher chance of a catastrophic kill on whatever vehicle. Um, low, this one, kind of as it suggests, it's basically the opposite, low flight path. Um, don't really recommend using this one. I just kind of recommend using the direct and the high attack modes, personally. Um, direct mode is kind of a good hybrid between the, because it kind of still does a little bit of a curve up and then back down, but is a much faster flight path. Um, I would really recommend using direct mode um, for basically medium armored vehicles and below, um, and especially for fast moving vehicles. Um, you know, you may, maybe you're, let's say your target is perpendicular, right? Moving left to right, you're going, let's say it's going east-west and you're going north-south, right? And you need to kill that vehicle um, quickly and it's moving fast. Well, direct mode's gonna have a better chance of actually hitting that vehicle, um, especially in a side-on profile like that. Um, so that's my recommendation. There's also, by the way, another way to do this. You can uh, ace interact not self-interact with the helicopter, and you actually can set both the laser spot tracker, turn it on, and also set the Hellfire mode here. That can that can be a lot more useful depending on um, the situation. So let's say that you know you have all this set up and you've got your flying mainly with your HMD, um, and it's kind of, the nice thing about the Hellfires is that they're low owl or lock on after launch capable. Um, so you just kind of aim them in the direction, general direction of where you think the laser spot is. 
um, let's you know in case let's in the, this hypothetical that I'm explaining, um, you have a ground JTAC providing you designation, so you don't have to worry about the laser. You're just basically the launch platform. Um, you know it might be faster as you're flying around, kind of avoiding you're in a uh, contested airspace. Um, you're more focused on flying in that situation, so you maybe don't want to get buried into the MFDs here. Um, and you also, let's say in this hypothetical, don't have a co-pilot, um, well, it's a lot faster to go through ACE here to set that mode. So, options. <laughs> um, I believe that is it for all of the uh, kind of weapon modes and uh, the FLIR, kind of all the FLIR screen, essentially. Um, so I guess we'll go into the fun stuff. Uh, let's go and actually shoot some things. So we'll do a, actually, let me demonstrate the direct trajectory here first. So. I am emitting, and uh, we know from previously that I had selected the Hellfire in this case. Um, let's go into Fle oh, I forgot to mention N, just like with vanilla, N will cycle your vision modes. Um, when you're in thermal view, you can actually see the laser. It's kind of hard to tell, but as I move it around, you'll see this little, yeah, it's kind of hard right there, but you see that little dot imposed on that bush. That's a way to tell if you're, you know, you're emitting. Of course, obviously, the obvious thing is the red LRF arm text too, but um, I can lock this vehicle. Come on. There we go. It can be a little bit finicky, but it's also why it helps have a co-pilot to, to basically deal with the FLIR pod stuff while the pilot focuses on flying. All right, so we are locked. And if we notice now, if I get out in first person, it's actually the, the quality and the clarity of the, the MFD here is actually really good. So I flying in first person in this aircraft is obviously not only more immersive, but it actually is better from a awareness standpoint if we're using the stuff properly. So, um, all right, we're locked and, uh, it's like we are weapons clear. You're in uh, direct mode rifle. And there it is. We saw that impact there. We actually go in, cycle to daytime, and yep, that is a catastrophic cook-off. Okay, so actually this this what is happening right now, this is can be a weird bug that happens sometimes where, as you can see, it's hard to describe, but as I'm moving my mouse away from the target, it see how it's kind of auto-snapping back to that vehicle? Um, no matter, like, even if I really move it fast, it just boom, right? Almost immediate. Um, well, there's a couple fixes for that. Um, I find that this happens when you shoot and it, you kill a vehicle. Um, you can try Control T, and if you're in, excuse me, if you're in first person view, um, sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. You see the GND stab that indicates basically the lock, whether it's actually in lock mode or not. So you can see it's kind of stuck there. That's where that um, FLIR mouse slew from earlier with the, when I was talking about the key binds, um, that's where this comes into play. And it's also, also a good demonstration here. So I'm holding left windows, that's what I bound. Um, as you can see now, I can actually slew and move the camera where my mouse is uh, going. So that's kind of a way to get it off of that target. I'm not sure if this is a bug or if I'm just an idiot <laughs> and I don't know the proper key bind to kind of get it to auto to turn off that auto snap thing where where after you kill a vehicle but is what it is um now if i go in you'll see that i can move the camera freely again here so and uh, we'll go back if i do control t now it's fully off ground stabilization as again like i mentioned pitch up now it's fully free and unlocked um, but we don't want that in this case let's uh, lock the target and uh, let's search for another one this time we'll, uh, let's use a dagger in this case. Go. That was a, we shot a Hellfire on a BTR-80, so I don't think that's, that's a bit overkill. Definitely do not need a, oh, come on, just lock up, please. A little bit finicky. Like, gotta find the right spot. Again, this is why it's very helpful to have a co-pilot do this. There we go. Okay. Let's 
go back out first person f to weapon cycle we are now on the daggers same thing um the trajectory i don't believe it I believe it only affects yes it, it does it only affects the hellfires it does not affect the daggers so daggers again that is those are the lighter um 70 millimeter guided hydro rockets that's the inner inboard right side pylon so we're locked I, I'm hitting uh, the R key to cycle my laser targets. That's the vanilla key. Um, it kind of gives you, when you're in third person, gives you this little... It's, it's the vanilla HUD, but it basically that shows you kind of like where the laser target is, what you're looking at. Um, cleared hot. Rifle. There we go. As you can see, the daggers are plenty effective on BTR-80s, which are even kind of the heavier armed up armored variant of the standard BTR so and in this case see the snap thing that's no effort it's not letting me move it so it's just a weird bug I'm sure it's something that I'm just I missed I have you use this aircraft for a bit for some but it could be that I've missed something so um, all right so that was a dagger in that example uh, let's do a top attack mode on a stationary target the Hellfire. There you are. I believe that's a tank. Nope, that is a building. <laughs> might help if uh, I might be visual mode is useful for that. Um, thought I had a tank out here somewhere. In fact, it is just, since it's not moving, it's probably turned off. Where are you? Oh, there you are, staring me in the face. Yep, engine's off, so it wasn't showing up in clear as much. Good demonstration, though, at least, of the capabilities. All right, so we're locked up. Um, I'm hitting R. See, R is turning that little secondary box on and off. T also does the same thing, but T will only do it for whatever you are actually actively looking at. R is the cycle target. T is the look at my current target button, so do that so that's the reason why is in third person sometimes we we do allow flying in third person for the 91st at least so um gives them a bit of you know better awareness of what they're looking at what their laser is locked on to so we'll go back here um this is a tank so we definitely don't want to shoot a dagger we will shoot a hellfire but this time we're going to change the launch trajectory to the high variant this is the top attack um we're locked cleared hot actually i'll go in third person so you can see how it shoots off the rack this time rifle is going way up there takes a much longer time than the uh the, the flight path is a lot longer so but this will be a top attack there it is now with the k variant this is a the up basically the heaviest armored um is a t90 sm i believe which is the heaviest up armored T90 that the Russian, at least the RHS variant the Russians have. So we might need to fire another one because I'm not seeing dismounts. So this is still likely active. Rifle. There we go. Let's see if there's dismounts. Not seeing that. Huh? These buggers are a bit tough, huh? Alright. So we'll do another one. This is a good demonstration of, you know, sometimes you need a bomb. <laughs> uh, in theory, the top attack should be. I'm sure it's just a. This mod is not part of the RHS mod. Of course, RHS is designed to work with RHS munitions. Um, I'm sure that's part of it. Although I've never seen it where it actually takes more than two Hellfires, so this is actually an interesting situation. Um, let's go into Zeus real fast and see what, what kind of damage that took. Did it take any damage? Guess not. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Well, maybe in this case, let's switch it up to a... Uh, um, We'll go a uh, direct mode. Let's 
So it still kind of goes up a bit, but it's not nearly as up compared to the high variant. Oh, I'm seeing smoke. Okay. See, oh God, it's, it's honest. It's probably just hit right in the special spot where it, you know, did a kill on the turret and vehicle. But yeah, that is a vehicle. It's not catastrophic, but it basically is disabled. So, all right. And as, and as you can see now, we move. We've got that bug again. Um, we're pros at this now. So let's do the alt windows key to move it off. And now we can do that. And that also, by the way, is useful. You can do alt windows key to slew like really far if you need to. Um, you can see as I move my mouse, it's doing that. So, um, all right. These, uh, one last thing, um, the dagger and the hellfire, both of those missile types, um, they're laser guided. They also, since they're low out or lock on after launch, they are capable of being locked on. You can actually use a, uh, secondary, you don't have to be emitting to, um, for them to be used. So let's turn off of our, oops. Okay, there we go. Yeah, please designate off. Um, let's turn that off. Um, let's find another target here. There we go. Tracking, this tracking. All right, excellent. Okay, so no lasers on. Um, we're gonna get out of this view. See that? See that there? Also, yeah, as you can see, is the. As I'm pitching up and down, moving left, right, etc., it's very stable. So when you're flying around in first person, you can get a pretty good idea what your, in this case, ideally be your co-pilot, um, is locked onto as you're flying around and you know avoiding enemy fire, setting up, getting your vec your flight vector set up for your um, your uh, gun run, that type of thing. So um, just the uh, immersion and situational awareness is actually pretty good. Um, but okay, let's go into I might have to go into Zeus for this because I don't have a UAV terminal that's fine all right so we are looking at yeah the BMD it looks like yes so look at this target go and lock it and let's make sure you are actually emitting no I will right, we'll turn it on all right there we go so we are emitting Laser target, we're locked. That UAV is now locked onto that. This would simulate um, a JTAC operator or even another squad leader using, you know, a, a drone or something else to lock onto a target that they want killed. Um, get out of here. And unfortunately, because I went to Zeus, it switched up my, my FLIR panel, so I'll get back into that. Um, can you tell we locked still? We are. Awesome. Okay. All right. So now, now we're back. So norm that wouldn't happen normally, obviously, because the pilot wouldn't have access to Zeus. So it's assuming working and coordinating with a JTAC operator. Um, let's turn our weapons menu back on, see what we're shooting at, or what, we, what we're shooting. Um, we'll do, let's demonstrate a dagger first. So we're in direct mode. Let me go in just so I can trigger it to be FLIR again. We're good. Um, I probably should be pointing in the right direction, huh? Yeah, the missile, the missile is pretty good at moving, but it, you have a kind of a cone of fire that you kind of have to shoot within for the missile to be able to basically have its um, uh, terminal guidance activate. So, all right, rifle, that is a dagger. You saw it move, tracking, oh, might have missed. Yep, this is a moving target. That was going to be a little bit harder for the system to handle that. Yep, we can see that now. So that's a BMD. Those things actually move pretty quickly. Um, we'll wait in this scenario. We'll wait for it to stop and then we'll fire. And turn around, fire. Oof, come on, you can do it. Oh, it is so close to hitting. All right, let's try a, uh, a Hellfire. But you get the idea. It's obviously, it's locking that laser, it's tracking. So in this case, we're just moving a little too fast. Rifle. What is this? That is a direct hit. And that looks like it is a vehicle disable. Awesome. Okay, 
Um, I believe that's that's basically everything that I wanted to cover in this video. Um, if you have any guys have any questions or comments, uh, things I messed up, um, please let me know in the comments down below.